Now we will plunge into our examination of classic versus posterior tongue tie by comparing and contrasting them. The anterior tongue tie is more obvious. It can be seen even more clearly when the baby lifts the tongue. The frenulum is usually a translucent, that is clear membrane in the midline. It may go part way to the tongue tip or all the way to the tip. There may be a notch, it may be heart shaped, sometimes it is rather flat. It can even deviate downwards. On the other hand, the posterior may not be easy to see. It may simply look like a short tongue. If you lift it, it becomes more apparent, like a rather thick bar where the tongue joins the floor of the mouth. Pushing your index finger under the tongue, you feel a wall, a fence dividing the sublingual space. It is a barrier if you try to draw your finger across. To palpate the posterior tongue tie, you push directly backwards in the midline sublingual space. If there is a distinct vertical tight band which does not give, you have a posterior tongue tie. The feeling will be like a line on your finger pad. If there is a high palate which coexists commonly with tongue tie, the tongue tie will have a greater impact due to the increased vertical distance between the tongue and the hard palate. A receding jaw or retronathia also exacerbates the effects of tongue tie because the receding jaw has carried the tongue into a posterior position. The entire floor of the mouth is now in a posterior position, exaggerating the forward limitation of the tongue. In these situations, I will be more likely to clip even a small tongue tie. A note on definitions. We are demonstrating simple phrenotomy. Otomy equals cut. Not phrenectomy, ectomy equals removal. And not z-plasty, plasty equals reconstruction. These are very different procedures, which are done in an OR with general anesthetic. Simple phrenotomy is a simple and low risk procedure, but a very precise one. It should be performed only by a physician or other qualified professional. It is recommended that experience with anterior phrenotomy be gained before proceeding with posterior. Advise parents that there may be a few minutes of stinging pain and a few drops of blood. When phrenotomy is carefully and correctly done, there should never be heavy bleeding. In some jurisdictions, written consent is advisable. For the phrenotomy, you will need a 4-inch curved iris, a small light as well as good overhead light, a large enough blanket to secure the arms, sterile sponges and a glove. I do not use a tongue lifter as I prefer to feel the tension with my left index finger as I release. You may provide some distraction, music, heart sounds, water, bird song, and you may consider local anesthetic. For older babies at your discretion and for posterior tongue ties, I use Xylonor, 15% lidocaine a dental local anesthetic applied either on a Q-tip or by one or two sprays on the frenulum. Wrap the baby and have the head supported by an assistant or the mother with the chin in sniff position. Place the scissors so the tips are as far as you wish to cut. Be conservative with your first cut. Clip and recheck to see whether you can go safely further. Sometimes when you have clipped the anterior frenulum, you may find the baby also has a posterior band which needs release. 
Many aspects of phrenotomy for the posterior tongue tie are similar to those of the classic form. But there are some differences and we will detail them now. For the posterior, enter the very center of the restricting band and clip carefully, feeling for the release with the finger of your other hand. When the center feels softer, proceed with blunt dissection with your fingertip and feel whether there are any remaining tight areas, either centrally or laterally. You can release these with an extra tiny clip. See how the frenulum is more obvious when the tongue is lifted. I do a quick, precise clip and then I feel for any remaining tension. I am giving lidocaine on a Q-tip to both sides of the frenulum as this is a thick one. I do a central clip and a snip to the side. I dab with a sponge and inspect. I consider another side clip but opt for a blunt dissection with a push instead. The frenulum is more apparent when the baby cries. I do a few central snips and then a quick push posteriorly to assess and possibly extend release. Here is another central clip with another snip on the right where tension remains. As this posterior is quite thick and the baby is older, I spray the frenulum with lidocaine. This is a revision as the anterior tongue tie had been released by a colleague. I'm grateful for this as the partial release had helped in breastfeeding, but more was needed. Note that I am feeling with the finger while doing several cautious clips. Even with this, there is very little bleeding. There will be a diamond-shaped wound up to about a centimetre in size. That is a little less than half an inch. This diamond-shaped wound can heal itself into the pre phrenotomy position, minimising the effect of the procedure. I ask parents to keep the wound open so that new skin can grow over it. A similar idea to wearing a retaining earrings after piercing. 
Parents need to push backwards quite firmly with a fingertip on the wound three to four times a day for about 10 days. Analgesia may be helpful for the baby. I mentioned to them that the diamond shaped wound will normally change color to white, creamy or yellowish. A natural healing patch, not an infection.